and welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of August 17th, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On today's program, we'll be um, doing a feature on our Home Energy Assistance Program and a preview of the coming season. The new heat season is starting. It's just around the corner, um, as we'll need to turn up our thermostat soon, and we'll catch up with Aaron Benson and Avril Gardner from the HEAT program in just a little bit. But before we do that, as we do um, always on ACAP today, first we're going to catch up with the news and information that you can use uh, for this week of August 17th, 2020. Uh, first, we want to remind folks that the new COVID-19 rental relief program is available. This is phase two of the program. It provides up to $1,000 per month for a maximum of three months for rent not covered by any other federal, state, or local program. Uh, the three-month application period includes prior months and or the current month, uh, and it guarantees that landlords do not uh, begin the eviction process in the month in which payment is processed. Uh, we have received over 250 applications for this program here in Aroostook County. We encourage you to go to Maine Housing's website, uh, the COVID rent, uh, rental assistance website, to apply online. If you are unable to apply online, please do give us a call and we have folks here uh, that can help you complete that application. They will enter the data in for you. We also ask for your patience. There's quite the process to go through um, in uh, the application process. At this point, we have processed nearly 90 of the over 250 applications that we have received and the team continues to work very diligently at it. It requires us connecting with both the, um, the tenant and the landlord uh, to verify eligibility. So again, um, this is a great program if you are having difficulty paying your rent, but it is for individuals who have been impacted, their household income has been impacted by COVID-19. ACAP is also encouraging uh, folks in our community to wear masks and to mask up when they're out in public and social distancing is not possible. We are doing that in all of our facilities and a number of our smiling faces, which I can guarantee you they're doing under those masks, uh, you can see it in their eyes, um, are uh, encouraging you to do the same uh, so that we can all stay healthy. We also want to remind folks that our offices are open by appointment at this time. Uh, we are also available by phone, virtually, and a curbside assistance here at our 771 Main Street facility, as well as our Military Street facility in Holton. Uh, you can certainly contact us uh, and make arrangements to have an appointment inside one of our facilities as well, um, and we encourage you to do that. Um, the Navigator program uh, for individuals who are needing assistance at this time um, uh, is, is available to you. Uh, we can do that by uh, working with you over the phone. Please call us at 764-3721. Uh, this is part of our CARES Act funding response to the community and allows us to basically help families in a multitude of ways, especially uh, families and households who have not had to navigate services before and are experiencing hardship as a result of COVID-19. So please do call us um, and our navigators are happy to work with you. Um, we're also uh, offering assistance with uh, tobacco cessation uh, during the pandemic and beyond. Uh, part of our tobacco cessation program here at ACAP um, is connecting with folks and we're doing that virtually at this time. So if you'd like to uh, set up an appointment to meet with Elaine Seip, uh, who is the program lead for this, please do so. Her phone number and email address are there on your screen. Our Hope and Prosperity Resource Center has resumed services at its new location at 975 Skyway Drive. That's the same building as FedEx and Child Development Services out near the airport. Uh, if you or someone you know is um, experiencing homelessness or has housing insecurity, this is a great facility to go to uh, to work with coaches uh, through the day on assistance with uh, getting connected with housing, employment, education, and a multitude of other services. The Hope and Prosperity Resource Center now open at 975. 75 Skyway Drive. Um, we also uh, want to remind you that our WIC program is uh, now located in the headquarters for the WIC program in Arusta County is now located at 771 Main Street. That's the building near Walmart. Uh, we've moved them over from the Goulville Early Care and Education Center. They are now uh, doing clinics. We have a facility here where we can uh, connect with clients who remain outside of the building. However, if you would like an appointment, we can schedule appointments indoors as well. And at this point, all other WIC uh, locations will be resuming services um, by months and including the Van Buren site, which is the last to come online. All of those services, again, resuming at all of our locations uh, for WIC services. 
The farmer's market as part of the WIC program has resumed for the season. There are three more to go on August 27th, uh, two more I should say, August 27th and September 1st. These are held from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. here at our 771 Main Street facility near Walmart in Presque Isle. WIC customers can use their farmer's market and fruit and vegetable checks um, and it's open both to the public and to WIC customers. We have done some updates to our technology to better serve our customers and we do ask for your patience. We have a new phone system and a new website um, and we're acclimating to both. Um, our new phone system will be especially helpful as we uh, discuss with our guests on today's program uh, about the Home Energy Assistance Program in just a, a little bit. So we'll be talking with them uh, in just a moment about um, how they are going to be connecting with customers over the phone in the coming heat season. You may qualify also for special enrollment period for the healthcare.gov, the uh, affordable healthcare uh, insurance marketplace is available to individuals who have been displaced in their employment as a result of the pandemic or have seen a change in their employment that's impacted their health insurance. Please do call us. Our uh, healthcare navigator, Stan Targonsky, is available uh, to assist uh, in, in helping you uh, navigate through the healthcare insurance marketplace. Our Be Proud, Be Responsible program as part of our Improving Outcomes for Youth program is also offering classes uh, on a number of topics at this point um, and valuable information on risky behaviors. If you would like to have more information on this program or to register, please contact Chastity Holland at 764-0733, extension 336, or her email address there on your screen. Financial literacy classes have gone virtual um, and we are offering them now to participants on an as needed basis. So we encourage you to contact us if you are interested in having financial literacy classes. We'll try to pair you with others and work the classes around your schedule. And we do have limited spots available for 2019 and 2020 high school graduates who successfully complete the financial literacy courses to receive a $500 mini grant to help fund their post-secondary plan, which can include education or work or uh, other plans as well. Please contact Chastity Holland at the uh, information there on your screen uh, if you'd like more information on this program or to get registered uh, for a class that again will be tailored around your schedule. The uh, Homeworks Home Buyer Education Program, which we spoke with uh, Greg Doak about a few weeks ago on ACAP Today, is booking for the September, October, and November classes. Our August class uh, was booked, uh, but Greg is available uh, to work with homeowners in the classes in September, October, and November. The dates are there on your screen. They're all held on Saturdays. They're day long, and they're all held virtually. So please contact uh, Greg at the number and information on your screen if you are interested in uh, the program. There are a number of benefits toward the uh, purchase of your home uh, that are more than worthwhile um, and make up for the nominal fee, uh, more than make up for the nominal fee that's charged uh, for the class. Again, Greg Doak is available for more information on that program. Uh, we are also pleased to partner with the Nordic Heritage Center and the Crown of Maine Balloon Festival. It's going on now. The County Has Heart Food Drive. Um, it began last Friday and it's part of a project uh, in partnership with Nordic Heritage Center to help raise um, and collect non-perishable food items for the community cupboards located at ACAP facilities and other sites throughout our community. Uh, the um, Balloon Fest is happening on August 28th and 29th. Uh, until then, donations can be dropped off at the Nordic Heritage Center. Um, in, in lieu of paying tra trail fees, individuals are encouraged to bring non-perishable food items. You can also bring them on Friday, August 28th, when they'll be uh, showing the Wizard of Oz at 7.30 at the Nordic Heritage Center. Uh, donations will also be accepted at the Star City Syndicate concert, which will be held on Saturday the 29th at 6 p.m. Um, again, in lieu of making a donation there uh, for cash, please consider bringing some non-perishable food items, which will be put to good use in our community cupboards throughout Arista County. Stuff the Bus, a very successful collection was held for Stuff the Bus, and we actually have some remaining backpacks available at our 771 Main Street office here in Presque Isle. If you are interested and you are in need of school supplies for your children for the new school year, please do contact us 
or stop by our 771 Main Street office in Presque Isle. We'll work with you uh, through the door. There's a video doorbell there that you can ring. We'll get an application out to you. We need you to complete the application, but please um, bring proof that you are eligible for WIC or TANF or SNAP or the Home Energy Assistance Program. Proof of eligibility for any one or all of those programs will uh, make you eligible for receiving a backpack. Uh, that's available between 8 and 4.30 Monday through Friday. And again, we do have those backpacks available. So if you are in need of school supplies for your children, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Our early Head Start and Head Start programs are beginning in-person instruction once again uh, for the new school year. Early Head Start classrooms are scheduled to reopen on August 31st countywide and Head Start classrooms are scheduled to reopen on September 8th. Uh, Head Start and early Head Start sessions will all be four hours per day for the start of the year um, as we all um, deal with the new uh, guidelines related to COVID-19 and social distancing. Uh, we will continue to do weekly learning packets and virtual virtual learning sessions available for families that choose to keep their children at home. We encourage you to contact our early care and education centers, the early care and education center your child may be going to uh, this fall uh, for specific protocols for that location. We also have some few remaining slots available at a couple of our centers. Please do contact us if you are interested in registering your child for Head Start or early Head Start programs that begin in a couple of weeks. And lastly, today in the news and information you can use, our uh, friends at the Department of Health and Human Services are offering catch-up immunization clinics across the state. Uh, these are available at local DHHS facilities. Call 287-6730 for more information. Uh, these are free immunizations that are being held um, at, at uh, sites across Aroostook County. They are also offering them in pediatricians offices uh, that uh, across the state. I uh, encourage you to contact your local pediatrician if you are not able to get into one of the DHHS uh, programs. And with that, um, it is my pleasure to welcome to ACAP today, welcome back to the program, Erin uh, Benson, who has been uh, joining us in the past, both to discuss the Home Energy Assistance Program, as well as uh, the uh, Workforce Investment Opportunity Act and some of the great programs happening there as she oversees both programs. Erin, welcome back. Thanks. And a new face on ACAP today, Avril Gardner, who is one of our tenured members of our Home Energy Assistance Program and a very valuable resource to people in need of heating assistance across Aroostook County. Avril, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, nice to have you both on the program. So believe it or not, even though we're experiencing it, hopefully another 80 degree day in Aroostook County, the Home Energy Assistance new season is upon us. Um, Aaron Benson, uh, I know your team has been working very hard to prepare for the upcoming season. So give us the specifics of what we need to know about this new season. Well, first, uh, I think the uh, most important thing is that we start taking appointments on uh, August 25th. And um, we are going to be doing the appointments via phone. Uh, we used to do outreach to places like Island Falls and Van Buren and Allagash and St. Francis. We're not going to be doing any outreach uh, because of the COVID pandemic, and um, we want to make sure that we keep our clients safe and our employees safe. So we're going to be doing things over the phone. There are some opportunities if there is a, um, a compelling reason that somebody needs for an in-person appointment, we can arrange that, but we're hoping to do the vast majority over the phone. Uh, we will be calling, we will be reaching out to people. Um, some people have already received this letter from us. It's, uh, it's uh, their HEAP appointment, and it's uh, not only the, the day and the time of their appointment, but a whole list of the paperwork that um, they can start gathering right now to be prepared uh, for when we uh, give them a call. I will say that people are confused because in the location box, we put appointment by phone, and we're asking people to make sure that we have the correct uh, phone number. But a lot of people are calling saying, where do I go? So you don't go anywhere. Uh, you stay at your house, which will be very convenient for many people. And we will call you. You do not have to call us. We will call you. And so, you know, we ask that you mark the day and time on your calendar and um, be around your phone 15 minutes before that time and 15 minutes after that time. I mean, sometimes it takes longer for 
you know, certain clients than it does for others. So we just ask people to be available and, um, and we will reach out to them. And what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna call and they're gonna go through the application over the phone and, and they'll be keying in the information that, that the, the client gives us. And then what we do is we print out the application and some other forms that people have to sign and we're going to mail them in an envelope that looks like this. And inside that envelope is going to be a smaller um, business reply. It's a self-addressed uh, stamped envelope. Uh, really, uh, that's the um, best terminology to use. And so when people get this document, they'll take the paperwork out, they'll sign. It's gonna be highlighted where they have to sign. There's gonna be a reminder form that has things highlighted about the kinds of documents that they have to get back to us. And then they're going to take all of the signed paperwork that we send, all of the documents that they have to add and put it in this envelope and drop it in the mail. And hopefully we'll have all of the information we need so we can certify the file. Okay, now Ava Gardner, the team had to sort of shift to doing these phone appointments in the latter part of last heap season because of COVID-19 and out of an abundance of caution for our uh, customers. And this year we're going to sort of be doing the same as, as Aaron just pointed out. How did it work in the spring semester? Were people appreciative that they didn't have to uh, present at a facility um, given all that was happening with COVID-19? And in general, how did it work with phone appointments in the spring? Um, a lot of people like the phone appointments better um, because they don't have to go anywhere, but there is a hold up with proof because some people don't have places to copy things they need and some people don't have copiers and stuff at home. So it, it's a double edged sword. I mean, it's good because they don't have to go out in it, but then we have to try and find a way to get all the proof back to us. And that's a big thing that holds up the, the application is getting the proof to us. I think that's one of the things that we want to make sure folks understand is between that phone call or what used to be an in-person appointment um, and the process of the benefit uh, coming into their fuel vendor account, uh, there are, there are, there's a process that happens in between that. And uh, if, you want, if you could just talk about that process to the time that it takes and what happens in that process and some of the things that, that can go wrong that, that derail that process you were touching on, on a bit there. Okay. Once we receive the application back from them, after we send it to them, like Aaron said, and they sign everything and get everything that's on the reminder form, it is mailed back to us. And when we receive it in the office, that becomes your appointment date. So everything like the wages and everything has to be three months before that appointment date. I check them in and make sure everything is there for the application. If it's not, we reach out to the client and tell them what they need. And if they need help getting it, then we try and help them along with that process. If even if it's like taking a snapshot with your phone and emailing it to us, the proof that we need, um, that's the biggest thing is getting the proof in. And we only have, from the time that we receive the document here in the office, they have 20 business days to get all that information to us. So as soon as we get it, we contact them if there's anything missing. If there isn't anything missing, then we check it in, goes on the shelf and the certifier certifies it and they will get a letter in the mail within two weeks of the certification. And although that our offices will be doing these appointments um, over the phone, our offices are available if you need to bring um, some of those proof documents to, to a space yes. to get them photocopied or whatever so that we have them, correct, Gabriel? Yes, yep. You can bring them right here to the Prescott office and we'll copy it for you. You can yeah, drop I, I, off anything in the box, yep. Sure, Erin? Yeah, I just want to interject. When we first shut down, uh, in mid-March and had to do appointments via the phone, everybody was shut down. So it was really difficult for people to, here's my social security card, here's my driver's license, and I have nowhere to get a photocopy. Um, that will not be the case this time around. I mean, I was just in the post office uh, on Saturday and noticed that they had a sign up about, you know, you can get a photocopy done there. So I'm sure if the post office provides that service, I'm sure many of the post offices do. Uh, the libraries are beginning to open up. 
um, town offices are open. So these are all places where people can go to get photocopies. And so I know that we live in a geographically large county and that, um, you know, our offices are only in certain locations. So it may be that uh, a town office or a post office is closer to some clients if they have to get, you know, a photocopy of something. So I think what made it very difficult uh, in mid-March um, is going to be easier because there are more places that are opening up. I mean, sometimes you have to go by appointment, everybody has has to wear masks, but the availability is going to be there. So I, I think that's that's critically important. But that, as Avril was pointing out, Erin, that 20-day period is really it, it, the, sort of a stopwatch that starts after you have your appointment. Is that correct? That's not only correct, but it starts from the day we send it. So if we send it to you today and it takes a week to get to you, don't let it sit in your house for a week. Um, I mean, when you see this envelope in your mailbox, it's something you want to open immediately and take care of it immediately. And some of the things that people can do right now, I mean, they can start gathering. Their appointment letter has all of the documents they'll need. So they can start gathering. Oh, I need my social security card. Let me make a photocopy of that. I need my driver's license. Let me make a photocopy of that. Those are all things that they can do right now. And, and, I, and I think too, what people have to understand is um, there are certain things, for instance, income proof, uh, social security income proof. We need the letter that people get from the social security administration stating, and it's sent either in December or January of every year. And that's the letter we need for proof for someone's social security. Sometimes people send us bank statements. We cannot use the bank statements. The bank statements show net, the net of the check. And what we need is gross. And so that document, that letter that comes every year from the social security administration, that is the document that we need. So the other thing that slows things down is when people don't send us the right document, the right proof. And, you know, for some people who say, oh, I lost my social security card, I don't have it. If that's the case with you, call the social security office right now and try and get that, you know, a, a new one sent to you because it's going to take, it's going to take a, a while. So um, these are all things that people can do to help themselves um, if they're prepared for when that packet comes and they have all of that information, the right information that's gathered and ready to send. So Avril, Aaron mentioned some of them, but let's go over. I'll bring them up on the screen now. It says what to bring to your HEAP appointment, but we're not actually having the physical HEAP appointments. So this is more the checklist of what documents are needed um, during uh, in the HEAP season. So walk us through some of these, these things that are needed from, from participants. Okay, we will need a photo ID. Um, it, has to it doesn't have to be unexpired this year they changed that so we can make you we can take an expired photo id if it's not too old um, but we do need a photo id if you don't have one there's always a possibility of getting a waiver through main housing so don't let that stop you from keep on going th with the process so we need proof of your social security card number Okay, there's different acceptable proof, which is listed on the reminder forms and everything. But it, we need a copy of the Social Security card or a copy of something that proves their Social Security that's acceptable through Main Housing, which is listed on the reminder form. We will need a current light bill. Even if you're, not respon if you're responsible to pay for your lights, even if it's not in your name, we still need a copy of that bill. Um, we need the at name, address, phone number of your landlord. If we do not have that, we cannot process it through all the way if you rent. Uh, we need proof of the gross income for the entire household. That means everybody 18 and older who has income. If you have a high school student who works and they're still in high school, we don't need their income. We need everybody 18 and over who is not still in school. And we'll need the prior three months to or 12 months to your appointment date. Um, we need the name of your fuel vendor and account number. And someone in the household who is over 18 must have 
an account in their name at the vendor. And then the signed permission form, it says that it's sent with the appointment letter, but this year we didn't send it because we're doing them over the phone. And once you get your packet, there will be one in it. And Aaron was saying with the 20 business days, once you receive the packet, you have 20 business days from the date you did your appointment to get the signed paperwork back to us. Once we receive the signed paperwork and your proof, then your appointment date starts. And you have, if there's anything missing, you'll have another 20 business days to get that in. So if you receive that packet and you don't have everything yet, sign that paperwork, sign that application and get that back to us within the 20 days from the day we called you. That gives you the extra 20 days to get everything else in. So if you get your packet and you say, oh, I don't have my wages, I don't have this, I don't have that, sign that application, sign everything that's highlighted and send that back. And that will give you the extra 20 business days from the time we received that in the office. Thank you, Averill. Aaron, one of the things that Averill noted there was proof of income. And I know that the income eligibility guidelines for HEAP changed last year in a pretty significant way. And there's another change uh, this year. Um, and it may make a number of more people in Aroostook County eligible uh, for uh, HEAP services. So what can we share with the public in terms of, of eligibility and what it's looking like for this year? Eligibility has gone up maybe a couple hundred dollars for each category. We're waiting for um, main housing to put together uh, a document that we can share with the public. And as soon as we have that, we'll put it on our website. And so people will have an understanding. Um, but, you know, there are so many people who, you know, maybe five years ago, six years ago, four, three, whatever, who had applied and um, were denied for being over income. And once you're denied, you just think if your income doesn't change, you just think, oh, I'll never be eligible. And th then all of a sudden it's off your radar screen. So I think what people need to do is take a, a look at those guidelines to see uh, how much they have changed and knowing that it's gonna be a little bit more um, for this season coming up. Because I think there are a lot of people who could be eligible who aren't even thinking uh, of, of looking. Um, so I would really encourage anyone uh, to take a look at that. I, I think it's important. Um, I, I, there are two other things that I just wanted to say that I think are important. Going back to wages, um, this is something that's a little confusing when we do a phone application. Uh, today is August 17th, and say I had my a phone appointment today. So then I would look back the prior three months, July, June, and, and May, um, for, you know, uh, for my wages. But with a phone application, as Averill said, when we get it back from you signed, that is going to be your official date. So if you don't get it back to us until the following month, then you need to include the current month wages. Um, so it can be very confusing. So I, what we're trying to do is just ask for four months of wages. So it, it, you, so we have all of the information that we need just in case we get the application returned to us in the following month, as opposed to the month that we actually talk to somebody. So it, it can be confusing that way, um, but it's just, it's important for people to understand that because it's the phone and because of the mail, um, it's just gonna be a little bit different. Um, I think the other thing that I, I'd like to say is um, you, we are already starting to get a few calls of people wanting to change their appointment. It's really difficult to do that because um, we have a priority list that we have to um, serve before December 31st. And that list includes if you're a household with someone who's 60 or above, six or below, or somebody with a disability. We have to uh, get those people into an appointment before December 31st. We have 3,111 priority appointments that we have to do before December 31st. So the only way that we're able to get all of those people in is just to give people appointments. And um, I mean, unless there's some kind of dire reason why your appointment needs to change, we really need to make sure that people 
keep the appointment that we've assigned them because it's just so difficult when you have that many people that you have to serve in a short period of time. And the convenience of doing it over the phone is that they don't have to go anywhere to have that done. So they can do it right from their living room if they'd like. Exactly. Um, also to put it in perspective for folks, um, I know we haven't released the, uh, and, and we will as Aaron indicated, as soon as they're available, the 2021 um, income guidelines. But just to put it into perspective for folks, a household of one um, in the last season, and we're anticipating an increase in this, uh, $26,612 um, annual uh, income. If you are, fall under that, odds are you may be eligible. A family of uh, two, for example, $34,800. And a household of four, $51,176. And, and Averill, those are those are not the be all and end all, correct? There are other expend expenses that can be deducted from that to, to get a household to that level. So if, if you, may, you may be eligible, even if you exceed this threshold of income. Yes, if you exceed that, there's, you can send in out of pocket medical expenses, like anything that you pay out of your pocket, like co-pays for your doctor's appointments, eyeglasses, if you had to pay for them, uh, dental, anything that comes out of your pocket that you pay, if you show us proof that you have paid that in the months that you applied, then we can subtract that to bring you down below the guideline level. There's also out-of-pocket child support that you pay that can bring you down. Um, there's there's uh, out-of-pocket medical expenses that you can claim to bring you down. So when in doubt, um, ask, correct? Right. Don't, don't not apply just because you think you're going to be over income because there are ways that we can bring you down. Great. Aaron Benson, one of the other things that we always try to remind folks is to, you know, we refer to it as HEAP. Um, but those, those, that acronym stands for Home Energy Assistance Program, and this is, as it implies there, or directly states, an assistance program, correct? Yes. Um, there is no way that we could afford to pay for someone's entire heating bill. Um, if you, what we are required to do is look at the consumption rate. So if I am a client uh, and I've been using you know, a vendor for several years, that vendor has to report the consumption rate of the client to Main Housing. And Main Housing puts that in um, the database and that's used to calculate somebody's award. And what I did was I looked at someone's, because the average award is um, probably about four to $800. I mean, there are some that have a higher award. There are some that have an award of, you know, 200 something, but typically it pays about 40% of somebody's consumption rate. And so if you, if you know that now, um, and it's, I don't know what temperature it is outside right now, but uh, um, it's certainly there's no snow on the ground. So if there's any way to um, stockpile some, you know, money that will help you when it gets really cold and you run out of your heap allotment um, because it, it will not pay for somebody's entire heating bill. It, it's just, it's not designed to do that. Um, and so people have to understand that there is an expectation that they will also contribute to their, um, their heating bill as well. And the other point to that, I think if I factor a couple of things in that you've noted, yes, we do have to serve households with individuals above the age of 60, below the age of six, and that have a disability uh, early on in, in the traditional build up to and start of the heating season here in Northern Maine. Um, but an appointment in April is not a bad thing at all, is it, Erin? Absolutely not. And I know that uh, we, we, we had appointments uh, through July 15th. And it's hard for people to think about getting fuel to heat their home when it's 80 degrees out. But if I get this, uh, this fuel in July, um, that's going to help me in September and October and November and December. And so you have 18 months to use your allotted uh, amount. And so it would be, if 
you know, obviously we're not taking appointments right now, but we were really encouraging people in June and July, if you haven't applied, apply right now because you can get some fuel that's going to give you a, a start when the heating season begins and who knows when it begins in Arista County. <laughs> Could be next week. First, yeah. it could be, you know, who knows? Could be next week, right? <laughs> so yeah, it, it just is a it's a great opportunity to get get prepared. And Averill, if folks have heard this and they've not been a heap applicant um, in recent years or ever, and they think that they may be eligible based upon some of the information that they've heard here, what's the best uh, course of action that they should take at this point? Um, they should call us and get scheduled for an appointment. The only way we're going to be able to tell is if they do an appointment and do an application with us. Um, but please call us, 768-3053, and we can try and get you in for an appointment, set you up for an appointment, not try, we will set you up for an appointment. What have we but not I, mentioned? Oops, Erin, go ahead. But I will say, uh, if you've never had an appointment before, it would be best if you called after October 1st, after October. because like I said, we have over 3,000 people that we have to, uh, you know, schedule between now and December 31st. And so we're hoping to have all of those scheduled and then we can start um, with the non-priority and then people who've never received. So calling after October 1st would be best. And some new technology has come into play. I know we're still working on getting some of the bugs out, but a new phone system and a new scheduling software for you uh, this year. Anything that folks should know about that as we uh, prepare to close out this segment? Um, I think there it's, I don't think it'll affect uh, our clients as much as it will help the employees to, um, you know, to be able to see things and the previous scheduler, it, people couldn't see it from if they were home and so it, it's just some conveniences uh, in the back end. And obviously when it's convenient in the back end, it's always better service to the customer, but I don't think it's, you know, something that we could tangibly explain but sure and what have we not mentioned that is important that folks know I'll start with you April on this one and then Aaron that we want to share with folks about our 2020 2021 uh, heap season um nothing that we haven't touched upon um it's just very very important that we get the proof back within that 20 days and with the phone application, if we don't receive that proof back in the office 20 days from the date we do the phone application, we have to void that application and then we would have to go through the whole process all over again. So it's just very important that they at least sign that paperwork and get it back to us. And that'll give them the extra 20 days on top of that to get us the proof. But that's the biggest obstacle is getting all the proof in in time. And of course, this year be available for that phone call when your scheduled appointment is happening. That would be the yeah. first uh, and most important step. <laughs> Aaron Benson, what else haven't we discussed that folks need to know? Well, I think we've said it, but it doesn't hurt to say it twice. Uh, we'll call you um, at the appropriate day and time. We will be reaching out to you. Please make sure that you're around your phone. Um, when we call uh, and sometimes um, we'll have the wrong number because somebody has changed their number. So if you've changed your number from last year's appointment, please call us and make sure that we have the accurate number to reach you. Um, sometimes we'd like to leave a message, but we can't because people haven't set up their voicemails. Their voicemails are full. And so, you know, we try and, and call a couple of times, but if we can't get a hold of you, we just have to keep moving. And there's, you know, there it's, it's every 30 minutes is an appointment. And so it's not like, you know, if, if we miss you, we might not get a hold of you. We may not be able to put you back into the schedule for, you know, maybe two months. And so I think it's really important that people do whatever they need to do to remember to, you know, be near their phone at that appointed day and time and, and make sure that you answer it. Good advice in changing times for the new home energy assistance program 2020-21 uh, season. 
Uh, thank you very much, Erin Benson and Avril Gardner for joining us on this edition of ACAP today. Uh, before we leave you um, out there, we want to remind you that Erin um, indicated that uh, if, you, uh, if you are uh, scheduled for an appointment to be available when we call you, but if you have for any reason need to call us and reach out to us for any of our programs or services, please do by calling us at 764-3721, uh, sending us an email at acap-info at acap-me.org, connecting with us on Facebook. We uh, post regular updates there on things happening countywide and agency-wide. You can also look for us on YouTube and our YouTube channel where you can see uh, past programs of ACAP today and other uh, wonderful instructional videos from some of our staff. Uh, and you can also always check out our new uh, website at acap-me.org. And as we do on each edition of ACAP today, we leave you with our snapshot of the week. This is Miss Brooklyn, who is ready to head back to school with the backpack that she picked out at the Children's Community Closet um, as a culmination of the Stuff the Bus program uh, that will be helping her succeed in the coming school year. Brooklyn, uh, who was a student in our early care and education programs for a number of years, now headed to the big school um, and with this beautiful new backpack to start her school year outright that kind of matches her mask there. Uh, congratulations to you, Brooklyn, and a reminder to all that if you are in need of a backpack filled with school supplies for your child, please call us at 764-3721, and we'll work to hook you up with one of the remaining backpacks. On behalf of the entire ACAP team, Aaron and Avril and everyone else here at ACAP, thank you for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week with another edition of ACAP Today. Have a great week.